Remember that alleged mosque bombing in Minnesota back in August? If you're like me, you might see it back in the news this week and think, oh yeah, that. Another one of those stories that made up for its total lack of substantiation with rampant politicization. Even though few facts were available, and indeed to this day, no suspect has even been identified or even described, the media heat on President Trump to disavow was immediate and sustained for about a week's time. But he never did, and this story and its related outrage faded, and everybody sort of forgot. I suspect that's because the outrage isn't actually driven by compassion for the alleged victims of the crime, but by whatever is the weekly convenient reason to hate the president. The story is back in the news this week on the basis of new evidence, but it's one of those cases where the new evidence doesn't actually reveal very much. In fact, it raises additional questions. So first, let's recap what happened, and then we'll discuss what's new. In the very in the very early hours of August 5th, there was an IED explosion in the Imam's office of Bloomington's Dar al Farouk Islamic Center, the largest mosque in the state of Minnesota. Nobody was hurt, only a small group of worshippers was even present for the day's first round of prayers at around 5 a.m. One of the members present says he saw a pickup truck speed out of the parking lot. This after the perpetrator apparently shattered the office window to plant the explosive. Damage to the property was minimal. Minor smoke and fire damage, misplaced and broken ceiling tiles, a few cracks in the walls, and of course the window itself, but nothing to impact the structural integrity of the building. The FBI, the ATF, the DHS, they all investigated in cooperation with state and local authorities, but they never labeled this incident as either a hate crime or a terrorist attack, because no suspect could be identified and thus no motive assigned. But that didn't stop Minnesota's opportunistic politicians from doing exactly that, capitalizing on the photo op to push an agenda without evidence and smear political opposition. If this were the rules were reversed, and it would be called a terrorist attack. And that's what it is. It's an act of terrorism, a criminal act of terrorism. This is against the law to do this kind of hate crime in Minnesota or anywhere in this country. The fact is, is that when leaders uh, stand silent uh, when people are targets of terrorist attack, uh, that in the minds of some may be interpreted as condoning that. And so we definitely uh, are looking forward to the president condemning this cowardly act of terrorism. You know, there's been a spike in anti-Muslim uh, hate and hate crimes. And so it's not just this incident, but for the whole rash of anti-Muslim hate that has been happening under the Trump administration's watch, uh, it is important for the president to make it clear that he does not approve of this. The White House never did issue a statement on the incident, other than Sebastian Gorka defending the president's decision to stay out of it until facts are available. There's a great rule. All initial reports are false. You have to check them. You have to find out who the perpetrators are. We've had a series of crimes committed, alleged hate crimes by right-wing individuals in the last six months that turned out to actually have been propagated by the left. When you've had people fake hate crimes in the last six months with some regularity. I think it's wise, don't you, to find out what exactly is going on before you make statements. Definitive information never arrived, even with all of the resources of the Minneapolis division of the FBI investigating. All hands on deck, they proclaimed at the time. But a big pile of cash did. The mosque raised nearly $100,000 on GoFundMe in the days and weeks following the incident. And while I'm sure the mosque's leadership would like to know exactly who did this and why, minimal damage and a disproportionately large bank deposit are probably an acceptable consolation prize. You can tell I have my suspicions about this case. Maybe it's just that in the absence of evidence, I default to disbelieve, or maybe I'm jaded by the recent months of countless hoax hate crimes. But I want to be clear, we don't have evidence that this is a fraud. We only have an absence of evidence of who actually did this. In any case, the political gamesmanship moved on to the next faux outrage, and the fact pattern that nobody ever actually cared about was left behind. Until this week, Week when mosque leadership released security footage from inside the building at the time of the explosion. Portions of the previous explanation of what happened look potentially validated. You can see truck taillights speed away outside the front door, you can see one member running to request help, and then you can see a couple different angles of the blast itself. But there's not much to learn here other than the fact that there was a vehicle that left the premises immediately before the blast, and the fact that there was indeed a blast, but given the property damage, I don't think much of that was disputed anyhow. The release of this footage doesn't answer much of anything, but it does raise a question. 
Why are we only seeing it now, more than two months after the incident? And that question gets more interesting when we compare the release of this footage to some of the things the mosque's leadership said immediately after the incident. After the blast, the director of the mosque told the Associated Press that the mosque lacked security cameras. Now, specifically, he said, outside security cameras that could have captured what happened outside. But later in the month, the leaders said they were considering installing security cameras inside the mosque as a security measure. The director also told the public that the mosque can't afford security cameras. And I can't find any record of the mosque's leadership saying, oh, but by the way, we did have some security cameras that did capture some of what happened. Stranger still, the current reports are that the mosque had six cameras within that one hallway that shows the blast, but reportedly none outside. Now, even if everything that was said was technically true, and hey, it very well could be, I assume if there were outside cameras, law enforcement would have examined that footage and at least identified the truck involved or some other lead. It seems weird that you'd speak to the absence of cameras without ever mentioning the presence of some cameras. And beyond that, the reasons for withholding the existing footage simply don't make sense. The director says he's releasing the footage now because, quote, the investigation of appears to be lagging. The reason why we showed this to you is because of the investigation is taking too long. Well, if the investigation is taking too long, maybe it would have been shorter if you had released all the information you had to the public to help identify a suspect. If you wanted the investigation to be as quick and efficient as possible, why would you withhold relevant evidence for two months? Or would that have been too quick? Did you want the investigation to lag just the right amount? The director also says he's releasing the footage now because some people have claimed the bombing never happened. And mosque leaders say they want people to see what it was like when the bomb went off to counter rumors that somehow this was staged or not a serious incident. We are asking people to, to share with our pain and see what we went through. This is the actual footage that inside when the bomb went going off. Well, first, this video doesn't disprove the primary allegation or criticism. People don't speculate that the blast never happened. They speculate that it was an inside job, a hoax hate crime. And second, even if all you wanted to do was prove this blast actually happened, why wouldn't you have done that two months ago when Sebastian Gorka and others were creating headlines suggesting this may have been a false flag? I'm not prepared to call this event a hoax without solid evidence for doing so but I am prepared to call out local and national journalists alike for not doing their jobs. There are major questions to ask of this mosque's leadership, questions of fact and questions of their own seemingly inconsistent testimony, but nobody is asking them, I presume, because they're afraid to appear racist or mean to a minority. Well, sorry, your job isn't counselor or nanny or coddler in chief. Your job is truth seeker, even if the seeking or if the truth itself is uncomfortable. And anything less is far worse a disservice to the public than simply appearing to be insensitive. For me and many others, we'll take the truth over comfort any day. Please and thank you. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, well.